what a thing. Labour Party have a little whistle stop and we block up the whole place. We are ready. We have done the job that the people had asked us to do. Your candidates, led by Gaston Brown, have led the charge. We have done our duty. And now it's time for the people to do theirs. I am excited about the next level. Are you ready for the next level? Then make some noise, man. You have absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Your government have worked for you all over the world when many other economies collapsed because they couldn't manage. Your prime minister and your cabinet did their job. The opposition called for cold stories, Chuck to hold dead bodies when they were called upon to act on behalf of the people they declared that the people can't manage they say we're going to die in the streets but they lost their way because they didn't understand Gaston Brown and the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party we do not back down from a fight when there is a fight, we run to the fire because you, the people, require leadership. It was the UPP who coined the phrase, leadership matters. You wonder what happened to them? Leadership really matters. Leadership mattered. That is why today, there are more planes flying in Antigua than anywhere else in the Caribbean. That is why today the hotels are ramped packed to capacity. Because people recognize just what the government did. You know that when countries all over were looking for ventilators, when we were looking for masks, when we were looking for PPPs, you can't find none. But it took the resolve of Gaston Brown to mobilize the entire government offices all over the world. And let me tell you all something, you know. When you have a prime minister who can lead, people put their hand up and say, tell me what you want. Tell me what you want. Not one government employee lost their job because of COVID. Not one. The economy fell on its back. And let me tell you this tonight. Everybody know that I serve in the other administration. All right. I have the opportunity to see from both sides. There was, is, there was.
jump on plane, went to America, go raise funds, fry fish and barbecue chicken in Atlanta. He abandoned the people of this country and more so this constituency. He abandoned you, ran away, left you, and he told you don't take no vaccine. Pringle take the vaccine when he go America because he can't go America without no vaccine. They couldn't do it. Them and their children were vaccinated whilst they left you to die. And Harold Lovell had the nerve to declare that in his own vision that there will be dead bodies lined in the streets. They bet against the Antiguan Barbudan people and they failed miserably. I want you, the comrades, to understand you have nothing to be ashamed of. I am proud to be with you tonight. I am proud to be in my red tonight. And tell them I say so long as I am an Antiguan and Barbudan, this is a VC bird party. Nobody gonna keep me out of this, yeah? We will come and we will work on the people's behalf because that's what Labour Party is all about. We never shirk from our responsibility. Times are tough. Times are tough. Prices are going up. We have no control over that. President Biden the other day had to have a meeting again. Food prices in the United States, they're going up. But yet Harold Lovell want to fool you to tell you that he going to lower prices. He going to cut this. He going to give away that. He going to do this. He going to pay child support. He going to pay, he going to do away with work permit. Um, 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 just wash your foot and come to Antigua. Because he can just give away everything. But we know Harold Lovell's track record. We know Jamal Pringle's track record. We know what they are about. When Harold Lovell had the opportunity to pull this country together and to fight the little thing they had in 2009. Because remember, that financial situation in 2009 was not a global financial meltdown. Now make them fool you. It was not a, finan a global financial meltdown. But Harold Lovell knows that the reason why he went to the IMF was to get rid of Errol Court. Nothing less. He took this country to the IMF for selfish reasons. All because he wants to be Prime Minister. Well, you know what? To be Prime Minister, you got to be ready on day one. To be Prime Minister of this country, you have to have the goods. And we all know that Harold Lovell lies naked. The guy is incompetent. And to make bad matters worse. To make bad matters worse. He has now appointed a man who can't even... Allow me, give me a chance. Ka Kapasita. How can you tell me that since this man was elected, he can't figure out the word capacity? Capacity? How then could he be your deputy prime minister to go where? Not one person from this constituency is in the Senate of Antigua and Barbuda. Yet he wants to be deputy prime minister. I said to the people of this great constituency, it is time for you to move your constituency in the winning column. Let's get on with the job here in all sense, East and St. Luke's. Next level. Next level. You also want housing developments. You want houses. You want to have an opportunity to have a representative that will defend you. But before we get in the heat of the meeting, just bow your heads with me very quickly. 
Dear kind of most of the Father, I want to thank you for the opportunity you have given us to be here at this time. We thank you for Whistle Stop, your protection through the Whistle Stop this afternoon. And as we get into this public meeting tonight, we ask you for your extended protection. Be with the speakers. Be with our leaders. Be with them. Bless their families. And bless the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Let the people say, yeah. We vote in labor. Yeah. We vote in labor. Yeah. I say, We vote in labor, man. Yeah. We vote in labor. Yeah. And we're voting labor because it is the right thing to do. Yeah. The nation is at a crossroad. We are getting ready to take off. We have done the work. How therefore can you put us back in the hands of the IMF? How can you put us back in the incapable hands of Harold Lover? A man who can't keep his wife can't be prime minister man. A man who can't manage a girlfriend. Who taking the girlfriend and the boyfriend as the, bo as the girlfriend cousin. And then the boyfriend declare me the boyfriend. He not ready yet. And we cannot afford to give this country over to a group of individuals who simply can't make it. Just imagine this. If for some reason, if for some reason that they win, just think about this. Just think about this. Compare 10 years of Harold Lovell and compare 10 years of Gaston Brown. Wait out. Think about it. Who within the UPP can take on the mantle that is required to lead this country? This is not a thousand dollar economy. This is not a million dollar economy. This is a billion dollar economy. And it didn't just come. We worked hard to get where we are. All of you sacrificed. All of you banned your belly. You gave of yourself. And that is why the next level is the people's term. They ask for subsidy. They say, well, how come you're not getting nobody nothing? All of a sudden... As soon as the economy level up, as soon as things began to happen, and the Prime Minister let go the little thing on the side, they're the same ones who say, don't give the people nothing. Ease off your electricity bill. Oh, that sounds like, oh man, they're trying to bribe you. We ensure that our carry come brothers and sisters, our comrades. Just imagine... And I was there, I'm telling you, every Thursday and Saturday, the immigration creep up every Jamaican they could find. And those of us at the bottom of the table pleaded with them. It don't make no sense. If you drive these people out the country, how are we going to get where we have to go? But they didn't care about that. They have a propensity and a hatred for non-nationals. And can you imagine that Bruce Goodwin, that old worthless foul, cursed the non-nationals, and Harold Lovell embraced him with open arms. Let me tell you this. They will talk sweet now. And I guarantee you, after the election, immigration will be on your case. You better understand that will labor your safer. And I am telling you, can I throw me on the one bus? But I'm happy to be here tonight. And I said to our CARICOM brothers and sisters, hold strain. We gave the amnesty because we recognize that we need you here in Antigua and Barbuda. We need you to continue the development. Every hotel full, construction is at its highest. And let me tell you, tourism 
is at 83 or 86 percent, the highest it has ever been in the history of this country. That didn't happen by chance. But I'm going to call my first speaker because I'm not the only speaker tonight. It's a long time I haven't spoken on the platform. And I'm ready. So we're going to have an endorsement of Colin Tintin James. And I'm going to call a fellow one's brother now comrade. When I saw him struggling, I said, boy, come with me. He said, I'm going to work with him a little longer. And then the university down there at Five Islands, Five Islands came on the scene. The young man said, listen, this is a good project. It's good for the people of this country. Well, that was a non-start and they tossed him out. Tonight, I am proud to welcome on the podium, Comrade Lamin Newton of All Saints to endorse Comrade Tintin. Come on up here, my brother. All right, all right. <laughs> Good night, comrades. Good night. I want to say how delighted I am. I am delighted to be here tonight to address you, the good people of labor. But before I say anything tonight, I want to apologize to the people of Antigua and Barbuda for ever joining the UPP and walking away from labor. I apologize to you and with a humble heart, I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your forgiveness, Comrade Chairman. I ask for your forgiveness, Comrade Hurst. I ask for your forgiveness, good people of labor. I want to endorse tonight Comrade Tintin Colin James, Comrade E.P. Chet Green, Comrade Samantha Marshall, and Comrade Sir Malwin Joseph. Comrades, you see, a few years ago, the UPP tried to bury me. And they were successful. They buried me. But what they didn't know, that I would germinate. I germinated and now my roots are buried strong in labor. I am going strong in labor tonight. Tonight I am taking you on a journey. And we're going down five islands. That's our first stop. Down five islands. And let me make it clear. Come with us. Last night you said the UPP fired me. The UPP did not fire me. I resigned from the UPP. I put my political career on the line. And I walked away from the UPP. Bunch of losers. Losers. Because they want to stifle education in this country. And I said no. I sat in the meeting with the gunman. And I said no. Uh -uh -uh -uh. When you all go and you all decide you all going against this university. Let the record reflect that Lammy Newton is not for that. Because I am concerned about the young people in this country. Not only the young people, but the parents. I remember a few years ago, mother came to me crying because she couldn't afford to bring home her daughter. It was a Christmas holiday. And you can imagine how cold it is. We all know how cold it is. And even though I didn't have it, and then after she left from by me, I said, no, 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 no. Mm -mm, I can't do this. And I went to the bank and took off the last monies that I had in the bank and gave her to bring her daughter home. The family, that's the first and foremost foundation in life. Family. But they don't care about nobody. D. Giselle Isaac, chairman of the UPP, said that you will be watered down. Because they don't want nobody to be their equal. And I am grateful, and you should be grateful, to the Honorable Gaston Brown and Team Labour for that university that we have down here. When we leave from there now, we go into English Harbour. Because these, these are things that are dear to me. When you look at the people of St. Paul's who depend on that yachting sector, which we almost lost, they didn't care. They didn't care about the thousands or hundreds of people in St. Paul's that rely on that sector on a daily basis. 
they had no concern. The yachts were leaving, going to St. Martin, and Gaston Brown and Team Labour, and I might I say we, because I'm a part of the Labour Party. We decided that in, when we took office in 2014, that was one of the first things we would do. We placed a reverse osmosis plant. I'm a wonderful no, no, I'm hand and paper in my hand. Make that similar hand and paper in my hand. Right? Kappa, kappa. Winston, it wasn't capacitor. It was per capita. He stumbled over a word per capita. But what I'm saying, when you look at what is taking place in St. Paul's today, that industry, that sector brings in millions of dollars every single year into this economy. We just witnessed a, a local group who placed millions of dollars to develop a new port because we can now accommodate the mega ships over in St. Paul's in English Harbor. The first class fuel, first grade fuel, water, internet, and most of all, safety. That is what the, 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 the crew members and the captains for the ships are saying. We feel safe in Antigua because of this government. The other day we heard how a lovel want to take the homes from you. It do not say you shut down Namco. We cannot allow that. Poor people in this country, ordinary men and women, teachers, nurses, police officers, and most of all, single mothers. Single mothers who can own a home because of the creativity of this Labour Party led by Gaston Brown. And Harold Lovell has made it clear on radio that he is going to stop that program. He is going to stop subsidizing the homes that you, you, you and you own. That is what they have planned for us. In 10 years, this man did not even build 50 homes. Not even 50. This government has built over a thousand in eight years. And he's asking us to go back to his model. You understand the man a crazy man? Gunman crazy man. Right now in Jamaica, Prime Minister Holness is doing every single thing possible to eradicate gunman. They may eradicate gunman and this gunman will tell how I must put it in. This gunman is telling us that we must trade the Honorable Gaston Brown for he. No way. We see thousands of homes going down. Down in Point, down in Denfields, over in Painters, now down in All Saints Road. People are owning these homes. Who in them? Hearts and sheep? People own these homes because the government made it possible for people like you and me that we can own these homes. But you know, comrades, I'm not going to stay too long because we have quite a few speakers. But before I go, I also want us to look at the situation with COVID. Winston touched it before. When they had the opportunity to join us, join us to fight COVID, the Prime Minister extended the olive branch to them and said, let us put all the differences aside. Let us put the differences aside and join the fight to fight COVID, something that has never been seen before in this world. And you know what they did? They said no. They preferred to see us lying in the streets. The mobs will be full to capacity. That is what they wanted. When it came the time for them to take vaccines. And let me tell you how they're bad-minded and don't love you. They took their vaccines. All of them. Every one of them up front. When it was the first opportunity. They went and got vaccinated. And then they led a bunch of people. Down to St. John's. VC Bird Bus and August the 8th. To protest vaccine. When them don't take for them. They don't love us. They don't love the people of Antigua and Barbuda. And I made it clear to Harold Lovell and DJ Zell Isaac, y'all can say what y'all want about me. My father taught me to think for myself, and that is what I did. God gave me a brain. If he wanted me to share your brain, he would do it so. But he gave me my own, and that is why I'm thinking for myself. I am saying to you tonight, comrades, these people must never, ever get the opportunity to run this country again. I am begging you, when you look at a man like Pringle, who has represented this constituency for the last five years and has not empowered one single person, one single person from this constituency, and is now coming back to ask us again. The guy can't even read a lesson, can't even read a lesson at the church service. This man went into parliament and said, 
Mr. Speaker, Antigua and Barbuda is wearing their masks. We are so embarrassed. The guy will embarrass us. When you look at that team that Howard Lovell has assembled, they will embarrass the nation. I am saying to you, Antiguans and Barbudans and my lovely comrades, we cannot afford to risk this. This election is the most important election ever in the history. The most important. And why we have to take it seriously, some of us may not live to see the other one. We may not get the chance to correct it. So this one, we have to make sure we do what is right. Keep our level and that bunch of LLCs, laggards, losers and charlatans. The Prime Minister couldn't describe them better. Couldn't describe them better. Bunch of losers. And they're asking us to now come and give them back this country after we would have seen the performance of the Honorable Gaston Brown and his cabinet. Comrades, I am saying to you tonight, it is very, very important that we make the right decision. This coming election, January 18th, please remember, we are taking this country to the next level. And remember, you're safer with labor. Safer with labor. Oh, put some volume on the music, man. Put some volume on the music, man. All right, let's wait the music man get him in, get him getting in himself together. Okay, man. They can't manage. That is why labor must be returned. Yeah. All right, Mr. Music Man. You heard. You heard Comrade Lamin talk about housing and the fact that Harold Lovell has declared that once he wins house, housing development, he will close it down. Chapa, he would privatize. You ever wonder why these people like to privatize things? Talk to me. You ever wonder why they like to privatize things? They want to privatize it so that they can get their people hands on antique and barbuda assets. If you want to ask a question about housing, go over to Follies. Remember that development over in Follies? Today, Chopper is struggling under the weight of a loan. And those people are at risk of losing those houses. Follies. Millions of dollars were placed in that project. And over a period of six to eight months, it just disappeared. And the people, when Gaston Brown became prime minister, came calling. They asked, where the money? Gaston Brown had to tell them, that there ain't nothing tall for do it, are we? Go and ask the minister of housing, where the money gone? And today, the people of Follies are under pressure. Chopper is still holding that mortgage, that loan. And you wonder why is it the Prime Minister had to create national housing? He created it because the UPP left Chopper oh, with so much weight that he couldn't put a new housing development scheme on the Chopper. That is why. And you know the reason why Harold Lovell wants to privatize it and get rid of it. Because the, the, the notes are there. The notes are there. In 2020, when the weight of COVID was bearing down in Antigua, the shipping containers didn't come. Food was getting scarce. And the Prime Minister being who he is, went to cabinet and he told the members of cabinet, look, we have got to ensure that every Antiguan and Barbudan have the fruit and vegetables required for their sustenance. Do you remember that? Do you remember that at every street corner, our farmers not being able to sell their food to the hotels? Because why? Hotels close, tourists not coming, plane not flying. One woman, one woman in the cabinet 
raise their hands and say, send me. She got out there and she began to do her work. She ensured that everything the farmers wanted, every duty-free concession was granted, was given. Everything they asked for, they got. Today, Antigua and Barbuda is better off because of Samantha Marshall. Barbuda! She's the minister of Barbuda Affairs. Today, Barbuda stands to be a, 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 a diamond in the rough in the Caribbean. They talk about a worthless captain named Trevor Walker. Let me tell you something. I, have, I don't understand that man. I can't understand him. I have never seen a development plan for Barbuda ever in my life offered up by Trevor Walker. Not once. The only argument he keeps going back every year, oh, they're trying to thief your land. Oh, they're trying to thief your land. They're trying. We don't need to pull up on the Barbuda people land. We're building you a brand new airport. We are building you hotels. Development. To this day, the job, men and women, here in Antigua, go across the Barbuda to work. Every Barbudan is working. That was possible because of one woman, Samantha Marshall. They would want you to believe that she somehow has failed. But I ask you, look at the country today. Look at our farmers today. Today they are more prepared. Today they are more ready. Today our farmers are on the cusp of a windfall. And don't worry about that whatless one talking about he have 20 something acres of land. One pupa tree. Yet he wants to be the next agricultural minister. Wilma Daniel warned us a long time ago about that fella. And he used to carry the bag for Wilma Daniel. Wilma Daniel say he thief, he bad minded. He don't love nobody. I say to you tonight. That the people of St. Mary's South. You have somebody who will defend you. She will not stumble on her words. She will not take nothing in your back pocket from nobody. Because the country comes first. Fellow comrades, I ask you, join with me. And welcome to the stage, none other than comrade, the lady of the valley, Samantha! Turn the music up, man. Yes! <laughs> Comrades and friends, yes. women of labor, yes. women of labor, yes. house of labor, yes. it's great to be here this evening supporting Comrade Colin James. My voice is going, so I'll be short. <clears throat> But I want to say, don't any of you make the mistake to vote UPP on the 18th of January. Don't any of you let them fool you into believing that their leadership is any better than the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. 
I want to tell you, the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party, we have built up from foundation to what we are now. We have helped to build this Antigua and Barbuda that you have grown to love. And we will continue to build Antigua and Barbuda. I want to speak tonight because I hear them putting out an immigration policy. I'm a lawyer. And I remember during the period 2004 to the period of when they ended in 2014. I had to be in court every single day dealing with issues for non-nationals. And UPP had put Shaku Simister as the lawyer at immigration to make sure every non-national that that challenge go home. Them not change. Do not be fooled. I am going to tell you again, UPP, during the period that they governed, put Shaku Simister as the lawyer at immigration for make sure that when they want the non-national for go home, then go home. You know what we had to do as lawyers? File habeas corpus. That is to prevent them like an injunction to stop them from just sending home people without a proper hearing. I am cautioning you. This government has always embraced our Caribbean brothers and sisters. We don't question anything. We don't judge you. Once you come to Antigua, you live by the law, you work by the land, we accept you as our Caribbean brother and sister. So, tell them, tell them, no come with no foolish story. They always say, non-national love for be around Labour Party, because I will protect them. So you remember that. I also want to speak about the lack of representation here in All Saints East and St. Luke. Because you have a gentleman, single Pringle, a single Pringle. What has he done for the people in All Saints East and St. Luke? What has he done? What has he done to improve the livelihoods of the young people in this constituency? I caution you. I caution you that come election day, you have the power in your finger. Make sure that you vote for prosperity. Make sure that you vote for development of your country, your community, your people. Vote for the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party because you can be assured we are taking you to the next level. I have a message. I have a message. Now I have a guy going around talking about one pound of sugar not enough. He not even half a pound. He not even half a pound. Cause he not ready yet. And let me tell you, have a lover, you are a poor leader because you, as a lawyer of so many years experience more than me, did not know that he was disqualified because he's a civil servant? What kind of lawyer are you? Much more leader are you? Harold Lovell, you said it's okay. We can backdate the letter. So I now see the boy boasting a letter dated the 4th of January 2022. 
We've been paying him. He's been getting government money throughout that whole year. One pound of sugar, the people want back their money. The people want back their money. You collect money for a whole year. I so far back, you have a back there, Tom. Look, the reality is, people, performance. And let me tell you, St. Mary's South, whether you're red or you're blue. You know that me perform. Let me walk around the table and me absent. Anybody can absent at her housing project. Anybody can absent at her community center with UE classes. Anybody can absent and deal with clinic. Anybody can absent and expand the St. Mary's Secondary School. Anybody can be absent and do road work throughout the whole constituency. Anybody can be absent and develop lands for housing within Keds Bay. I joke, then joke. Well, if me absent, I need me to be more absent so me can do more. <laughs> <laughs> done. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. He come out of time and talk about he's a community activist. He clean one road one time. I want to see you again. He go paint the bridge yellow. He blow off two times and I want to see you again. Because I had some hat now. Then I'm accustomed to that. But you could do so much more for the people without being elected if your heart was there to represent. Because I have been doing more even before I was elected to represent. And I tell you this. Because one pound of sugar is no different from the rest of them. Single Pringle or any other one. They are luggers, losers, charlatans. And they might look for what they can get. We are, as the Labour Party, committed to serving the people of Antigua and Barbuda. You look at Sir Robin. And some Malwin, who have committed years, years, and they want to cry them down. No one thinks about the fact that that level of commitment and passion is because they love the country and want to see the best. Well, I want to say to you here tonight, there is only one way to vote. There is only one party to govern Antigua and Barbuda and make sure that we continue to strive to the next level. It is the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. And before I go, look at leadership. Look at leadership. They talk all kind of manner of evil about Gaston Brown. But who saved Abib? That how let them mash up Gaston Brown. Who make sure he stand up and say Bank of Nova Scotia now sell to nobody other than this government? Gaston Brown. Who make sure that government is a majority owner in we are today? Gaston Brown. And let me get a little more passionate to you. Who makes sure that poor people who have their children who are doing well educationally and want to aspire to be better now have a travel back and go to UWE Five Island Campus, Gaston Brown? Who made sure that people who could not afford to go to the bank and pay $400,000 mortgage. Can live in a house value $400,000 or more. And pay a $200,000 mortgage. Gaston Brown and the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party. And you want to tell me that you, you would listen to UPP. 
wanting to move the Antigua Barbuda Labour Party, you would be setting yourself back for many, many years. Progress is a must. Antigua must move on. Labour, Labour, we're taking it to the next level. Hey, my comrade just remind me. Say, Mary South, I who make sure Jolly Beach workers get their severance. Gaston Brown and the Labour Party. Samantha, Samantha, give it up for Samantha. DJ, you have to do better than that, man. They cut off the sum right in the middle of the sum. Yeah? You heard from the lady of the valley. And I want to tell you, Abib is still waiting for one point something million dollars from the UPP, which is still owed to Abib to this day. And you want to know how I know? They make a mistake and send me the letter. Me have to tell them, listen, me I sign that dinner. So they say, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry. The United Progressive Party owes Abib over a million point something dollars. To this day. And they turn around and cost Gaston Brown. Just imagine that. The man who put his life and his family on the line every day to ensure that the depositors money in the bank whether it was bank of uh, canada or it was what the other one named scotia bank they wanted to sell the antiguan bank with the money to trinidad they wanted to sell it to guyana gaston brown said hell no give us first right of preference man and what did he do? He said to ECAB, it's time to step up. He said to the Antigua Commercial Bank, step up and save the people's money. To this day, ACB is getting ready to go on the regional stock market. Why? Because they now have enough assets so to do. That is what leaders do. And who did Harold Lovell support? Harold Lovell cost Gaston Brown. Say how we talk rough to the people, to the white man and them. I say to you tonight, give me Gaston Brown every and any day. Because I know that he will defend the people of this country. He has never bet one day against you. They can run them out and say what they want to say. I prefer my prime minister to be on a farm than to be down at Wendy's or some house. Let him have his farm so he and his family can go and have family time. They just envy us. They vex. They are upset that your government tell you go to the bank and tell the bank you're going to buy a $400,000 house and you're going to pay $230,000. Wow, wow. That says a lot. When white men come here with just a briefcase alone and walk away with millions of dollars, Harold Lovell say you are not worth $250,000. But your government says go to the bank and tell the bank that your government stands with you. That is a leader that I will follow anywhere, any day. 
Gaston Brown has never squandered the resources of this country. When he won the government, Sepcom, the water company that UPP hired, told Gaston Brown, you have 14 days. Can you imagine? You have 14 days to pay off the outstanding amount or we're going to turn off the water. West Indies Isle, step up and say, within 10 days, all them bunks check that Harold Lovell write us, we're going to shut off the tap. Can you imagine what that would have done to the economy of this country? Can you imagine? APUA is on the ballot because they tried to sell it. State insurance is on the ballot because they tried to sell it. But Gaston Brown stood up and he said to Sepcom or whatever the company name, we're going to pay you, but pack your bag and get the hell out. Nobody should decide when we get water in this country. And we set out to invest in water today. No administration, alive or dead, alive or dead to come, have ever invested more in water. There is no ground service water. We're taking 100% of the water from the sea. That means $22 is obsolete. What we're paying for water now is obsolete. The cost of water, if, it were to be, if you had to bear that, would have been upwards of a hundred or two hundred and something dollars. But yet, water flows in your pipes. APUA is still running. Your electricity still comes at the same cost. Although the cost of electricity, of fuel, oil prices are still high. And Harold Lovell wants to fool you. So you know what he says? How come oil prices are lower? But gas prices are so high. You saw it chop it. Oil, oil. Oil is the raw commodity. Yeah. You break that down, you get diesel, you get gas. And what a stumbling buffoon Harold Lovell is. Call a whistle stop. Gas price is low. And he still couldn't put gas into something. Well, well, well. <laughs> they must never, ever come back to this country to leave us on the side of the road. Ever again we call on our next speaker a young man a young man who ran against the man he's going to endorse but he had to come to the understanding very quickly because when he raised his voice in a particular meeting Harold Lover pulled out his gun and put him on the table and he told them anyone are in the open their mouth what he would and wouldn't do I said to you today that the, the young people of this country is worth more than brandishing your gun to them. That is why Pringle thinks he's going to be Deputy Prime Minister. That is why Pringle thinks he's going to be Deputy Prime Minister. My goodness. Comrades, join with me and welcome the man from St. Paul's, Comrade Driftwood. He will endorse Comrade Chet Green. Come on up, Driftwood! Yes! How's it ever? House of Labour, St. Paul's people, come in and dance. First of all, let me say a blessed evening to all of you. I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here this evening. I was lost and now I'm found in the House of Labour. So we do it. I want you to remember on the 18th of this month, there are two distinct pathways. A pathway with a continuum of progress. And we shall continue to build this country. 
And the other part was a part where failure with a leader by the name of Harold the Loser. Let me say to you this evening, we have to protect our young people's future. We have a duty and an obligation. And all of you here today, tonight, must make sure you have your voter's ID. You have to have your voter's ID. But let me tell you a little bit about Harold Lovell. Harold Lovell believes he wants to be a dictator. And he has this mindset that he has to be prime minister someday in this country. You think that can happen? You think that can happen? Do you think that can happen? Not at all, not in this country. Can Melford go bang your head in up there? Let me tell you so. But let me give you a little story. Because I ran the United Progressive Party's ticket. Most of you know that. You know that? And after the election, people like Lamin and myself stood up in a meeting and we made the pollution clear that Harold Lovell should not lead this party. We need fresh and new leadership in the party. And we galvanized our support all the young people in the party. And we supported a man by the name of Richard Lewis. And after we did that, the party decided a vengeance against people like me, Lamin, and other young people in the party. This is what these guys did. And this guy went even further. He organized a meeting in Kakman Hotel, what they call Shadow Meeting. Invite all kind of people to try to undermine me. And when I found out about that meeting, I called the chairman at the time, Jamal Fredericks, and said, hey, call up and tell you, shut them down right now. Get everything mash up. They shut down the meeting. And then another week after that, they said to us, bring your supporters to the meeting. Let us see who have the strength. The hard boy they call Denmore Roberts come with seven people. Clear and Attil come with two persons, including herself. And I came with about five busloads of people. At one point, the chairman said to me, remember we are on the COVID restriction. We cannot have these people down here. We brought an army down there that night and showed them that we run St. Paul's. We have the influence. So I'm saying all this to you so you can understand that Harry Gill will promise you the world just to become Prime Minister of this country. And we cannot allow this. Harry will say he's a captain, but captain of what? In 2020, this country set sail out and we went into the COVID era. And when you had the leader, Gaston Brown, holding the helm, and people like Samoa and Joseph at the bow, taking this boat through a storm. And people like Harold Lovell and his comedians have stone trying into the water, trying to create ripples to stop the ship. But Gaston Brown's cabinet took us forward, and here we're safe today. So I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, we have a duty, and that duty is to re-elect the Antigua Party. That is what we're doing here tonight. And we're here because we have a shared identity. Poor, hard, working people. That's who we are. Entrepreneurs in our own right. I am here tonight to endorse my good comrade, Chad Green. My good friend. When I look at the development in our community, fixing all the police stations, building our clinic, fixing the roads, reverse osmosis plant, an empowerment center looking after the elderly in our community and better yet to empower our young people with education ue and i'm saying this man is a good man and i am here to support him all the way let me hear you labor we say labor we say let's go labor we say and i am also here to support my brother tintin he is a good man you have seen Pringle, Single, whatever you call him. I would believe by now, five years, that Pringle would have developed with some sort of mindset. But he hasn't developed at all. So I want to make sure you, the people, when you go to the poll on the 18th, that you are thinking consciously, that you will make a conscious decision 
to re-elect the Antigua Labour Party. Let me hear you. Labour, we say. Chet Green, we say. Tin Tin, we say. I said we do it. Love you, Magan. Comrades, the meeting going good. I said the meeting going good. We know you've been out since early today. So we're not going to tarry the night. We want you to go home and rest up. Because tomorrow again, tomorrow we're heading down west. Tomorrow we're heading down west. We're going to rural west. We are going to support none other than Comrade Gail Christian. All the way. All the way. Okay, Mama. I wonder if you all know that me and Mama related. You all know me and Mama related? She cussed me every day when I'm on the next side. She said, I love you. <laughs> I love you too, Mama. You know... Think about this. Just let me not shout too much because I want to think. And I'm not going to be disrespectful to anyone. Okay? Is that okay with you? I say, is that okay with you? Everybody, when they grow up, they want to be something in life, right? They aspire to be doctors. They aspire to be pilots. Some even aspire to be politicians. Do work at the hospital. And the little one shall lead them. But somewhere in that dream of yours, you are going to think about what would it take for me to be better? What would it take for me to be better at this job? So you're going to decide on a path that you're going to take. Can somebody please tell me the path that Pringle has taken? No, let's, let, let's be fair. He is leader of the opposition. The second highest job in this country. There is the prime minister and there is the leader of the opposition. He's number two. Right? And you mean to tell me that Harold Lovell Rather than giving this young man an opportunity to grow, to develop, to harness him up to take over, Harold Lovell take over the sudden. To this day, Pringle cannot utter a single thought without reading it. Something is wrong with this picture that you have 17 men and women who you want to form the next government. You see how the world is operating. You see how difficult things are. You've got to be on your P's and Q's. You don't go to an international meeting and have nothing right up on a piece of paper. You have to be quick because other countries will bop you out. Think about that. One of their candidates shot a woman dead in the streets another one declared bankruptcy in the united states we don't know who he are we don't know what his arrangements are we don't know if your taxes are the i at the irs they pal around with child molesters convicted pedophiles think about that pay attention you may feel that you want to be sympathetic, but my God, think about it. Gladys Potter? No, I mean, I'm not being disrespectful, but just think about it. What happens if Harold Lovell can no longer be prime minister? Is Serpent, the duck is meant? He going to go to the UN and tell the UN people I have a duck is meant here? They can't develop a thought 
I know you might be sympathetic, our UPP supporters, our brothers and comrades, but I'm saying to you that at this juncture in our nation's development, we cannot take chances. Yes, dog, me, me agree with you. Even the dog barking. Think about that. Think about that. That that entire slate, if you put all of them together, you can't get a single thought out of none of them. They've never sent any of them to the radio stations. You don't know what, they thought, what, what their thoughts are. When they ask Gladys Potter, what economic opportunity you think you're going to have for the people of your constituency she said that is not my field somebody else will talk about that they're not ready and we have got on, on election day the people of this country have got to say to the opposition we require better when you come to represent us in this country find the best and that is why Gaston Brown ensured that he has 17 men and women. If Gaston Brown decides he's not going to work today, you don't have to look over his shoulder. The cabinet still rolls on. When, when Gaston Brown leaves the country, he can walk with his wife. He don't have to look back. Simply because he has men and women who can govern this country. We have got to send a clear message. Pringle has failed you. Pringle has failed you. Pringle has done nothing to bring himself up. Nothing at all. And let me tell you very quickly before I call my next speaker. When I was growing up, I didn't like school. I hated sitting in school. But I always read my outlet newspaper. My mother always made sure I read the outlet newspaper. And I read that paper over. Opposition Pringle, all he has to do is say to the Prime Minister, hey, I want one of the scholarships you have. Let me go overseas and get a lick of something. Let me make this clear. Education doesn't make you a good leader, but it sure does help you to understand the global situation. comrades and friends good evening comrades and friends let me welcome all of you to the mark point sports complex and in general the mark point playing field and let me say 
a very big thank you to all those of you who turned out for what was a whistle stop, but turned into a mini motorcade. Let's give yourself a round of applause for turning out in their great numbers. Somebody said it was a big motorcade. So you know when the mega cage come next Sunday, it's going to be twice or three times what we had this afternoon. Ten times. Well, it's nice to be back in the fold of the Antiguan Babylon party. And as you know, from 2018, we have never stopped working. We may not have gotten the majority of the votes back in 2018, but we had worked to make sure that we had put ourselves in a winning position so this time around, comrades and friends, ladies and gentlemen, I said to you, this time around, comrades and friends and ladies and gentlemen, all Saints East and St. Luke, all Saints East and St. Luke will be, will be in the winning column of the Antiguan Babylon party. There's absolutely no doubt about that. I will make sure this time around, we're not going to only win, but we'll win by more than 10 votes. We'll win more by more than 10 votes, ladies and gentlemen, comrades and friends. I make that solemn pledge to you. And I call on all the voters in the All Saints East and St. Luke con constituency. Whether they be in All Saints, Matthews Road, Sweets, Follies, Suckholds, John Hughes, Fletcher Drive, Old Road, close to Cades Bay, rally with me. Rally with the Antiguan Babylon Party and let's make sure that we bring one victory on January 18, 2023. Comrades and friends, you have nothing to be worried about. Rest assured that we have done the work and will continue to do the work until the 18th of January. They're running scared. They're running scared, comrades and friends. You know what they're doing? They're trying to buy your votes. Do you know what they're doing, comrades and friends? They're trying to buy your votes. You know, WhatsApp is a very good means of communication. And I got a WhatsApp while we're in the Megacade. Or Motorcade, whichever one you want to call it. I got a WhatsApp from a diehard labor right. And he said, they offered me $5,000 for my vote. $5,000 for my vote, he said, they're offering him. So they're scared later. Comrades and friends, they're looking to buy your votes. Be vigilant. And you parents, you friends, make sure that you speak to one another and make sure you ensure that the diehard Labour Party supporters support the Antiguan Babylon Party. Comrades and friends, I pause to welcome Comrade Leader, Prime Minister Gaston Brown. Let's welcome him with a round of applause. Comrade Leader Gaston Brown. We'll be leading 16 other men and women on January 18th to victory in the next general elections. Let's welcome Comrade, comrade Leader Gaston Brown. Comrades, are you ready for labor? That's right. Let's hear it for the greatest political institution in this hemisphere, the Antigua and Barbuda Labor Party. Let's hear it. Tonight, I am here to support Comrade Tintin James, Comrade Colin James. The next representative of all Saints East and St. Luke. You know, during the 2018 elections, the single Pringle ended up with a fluke. And I have to tell you that Pringle has proven to be an embarrassment to the people of all Saints East and St. Luke. After five years, approximately, in the parliament of Antigua and Barbuda. Pringle has not grown. The man has not made a single presentation of note after five years in the parliament. 
Now he's wanting to come unprepared to serve. But given the opportunity to serve the people of All Saints East and St. Luke, Pringle had a responsibility to develop himself. What did he do? He took on the same posture of all of the other LLCs within the UPP. The losers, the laggards, and the charlatans. I spoke to Pringle personally when he first came in. I said to him, Pringle, you're a young man. Don't allow people like D. Giselle Isaac to destroy you. If you heard some of the most stupid, stupid speeches that he read that were prepared by D. Giselle Isaac with a lot of vitriolic rhetoric, you'll be ashamed of him. We'll be talking about A and he cussing about B. And I talk about the invention of words, you know. You all remember the capacitor? We're talking about per capita income, you know. This man talking about capacitor. You're telling me that the intelligent people in this community, All Saints East and St. Luke, and we know in All Saints, are you telling me that you're happy with that type of representation? And how could you be happy with that type of representation when you have a man like Comrade Tintin James who has the capacity to represent you? A man who has been in the vineyards for years, for decades, who has served this community with distinction. Tonight, I say to the people of All Saints East and St. Luke, that if it's one time that a man deserves a chance, this is the time for the 2023 elections that will be held on January 18th that Comrade Colin Tintin James deserves your support. He deserves your support. Comrades, let us be fair, man. Comrade Tintin James is not a just come. This is a man who has labored decade after decade to uplift the children in this community when it comes to the contribution in sports. I can say to you, in terms of nurturing our young people, there's none other that has made a larger contribution than Comrade Tintin James. And I want to say to the people of All Saints East and St. Luke, we are currently on the threshold of taking Antigua and Barbuda to the next level of progress and prosperity. And tonight, I want to spend a little time to share some of our plans with you. To let you know that the only institution that is equipped to take this country to the next level of development of progress and prosperity is the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. And you would have seen our work for the last eight and a half years. You would have seen and would have benefited from the progress that we have made in the various projects that we have pursued during the last eight and a half years. You have seen in education, for example, that we have more than doubled the capacity of our secondary schools. We built out or established for that matter a university campus. We are currently building out the vocational and technical vocational facility at Thomason's Abyss, making it into a world-class facility. So you know what will happen? In fact, let me add here that on January 16th, we will have the signing of the loan agreement for the $216 million to further build out the UE Five Islands campus. Taking Five Islands to the next level, we want to make sure that we have one of the finest campuses anywhere in this hemisphere. And we're going the extra mile to raise the funds. Because you know what? We intend to make Antigua and Barbuda an educational hub for the entire OCS subregion. So you can leave from any OCS island. You come here to five islands. You can stay, with, stay in a dorm on the campus. Or if you're not academically inclined, you can come here and you can get a technical and vocational education 
at the new abyss the new harrison center these are investments that are taking place these are not idle promises already we have started construction of the new abyss facility we got a grant of 12 13 million pounds from mr david harrison and that project is far advanced and i want to tell you all something too when it comes to education our policy is education from cradle to grave so for example starting within a matter of months and we'll have a signing agreement very soon i don't want to preempt the minister of education we will build out to start four early childhood facilities in several communities you know already we have established one in buckley's thanks to the contribution of comrade michael brown and the maria holder trust but you know what we want to make sure we level the playing field so where is the wealthy people in this country and the middle class people they have the resources to provide early childhood educational opportunities for the people we want to make sure that the have nots that the poor class of people that your children from the time to get to about two years old that they can get an education a good quality early childhood education because we know that because a number of people at the low spectrum cannot afford to send their children to preschool to get an early childhood education many of them end up with a disadvantage we're saying here we're leveling the playing field man make sure that they have opportunity to first class world class early childhood education and for those who may have not completed their formative schooling their secondary schooling and they're desirous of going back to school we have the second chance program and the whole idea is to help you to get your cxc's to get your cape so that can matriculate to you with five islands and you get your degree i want you all to understand you know it's a comprehensive integrated plan that we have for the people of this country and we are not coming here just to make promises you can see our work so my dear people you can see the type of facilities that we put in place in fact even the second chance program will be given a new home so the old otter school we're gonna transform that into the second chance program so that you could have proper facilities you can leave work and go there in the evenings do your cape subjects do your cxc subjects get the necessary subjects to matriculate to five islands or any other university for that matter and again you know we have the scholarship program so in addition to the fact that we are spending about 20 million dollars a year to fund ue5 islands in addition to that we give our people up to 30 million dollars a year in grants to get a university education let me hear it for labor man and i asked the people of antigua and barbuda if they have ever seen any administration in the history of this country that has spent so much money investing in its people i say to you that it has never happened before in the history of this country and our commitment to you the people is to provide you with a higher level of prosperity and progress and we recognize that in order for you to achieve your self-actualization goals that we must provide you with the opportunity to get the best education and that is why we are spending hundreds of millions of dollars in order to build out the educational infrastructure in this country because we are caring government and we want to make sure that you can compete with the best in the world by ensuring that you're properly trained if not with a technical and vocational degree with an academic degree yes, yes. my dear people when it comes to health care you know a healthy nation is a wealthy nation and we are expanding the services at mount st john now celeste bird medical center 
Currently, my dear people, we are about to establish a cardiac unit. Within a matter of months, we'll be doing hip replacement, knee replacement at Mount St. John, Celeste Bird Medical Center. And later in the year, and I'll say no later than 2024, we will be providing certain cardiac treatment, surgeries, procedures at Mount St. John. So if you need a pacemaker, you can get it done there. Any form of non-invasive heart treatment, you'll be able to do right here at Mount St. John. So tell me, who care about the people? Labor. Let me hear you say labor, man. But we're not stopping there, you know. Currently, Antiguan Barbuda has one of the most thriving stem cell therapy facility in the entire Caribbean region. We have the provision of stem cells therapy in which they use literally cells from the umbilical cord of the fetus. And they use that to generate these cells which can treat a number of ailments. And we have professionals who come here on an annual basis. In fact, Dr. Joy John, he's one of the local practitioners who is working with a, with a U.S. doctor to provide stem cells treatment, which can literally cure a number of ailments. We have the wealthiest North Americans, Europeans coming here, literally on a monthly basis to be treated. And those services are also available to Antiguans and Barbudans. And I give you a little story here. We had two Antiguans during COVID who were critically ill. And they were treated with stem cells. And they made mi miraculous recoveries. It is my administration that paid for the stem cells treatment that saved their lives. When you look at infrastructure, look what you have done at the Deepwater Harbor. And the son of you, you only go to work at home or maybe church. Work, school, home. Jive down to the deep water harbor and look at how your Labour Party administration has transformed our cargo port. So you know going to happen next? We will be doing transshipments. In fact, transshipments have just have started already. So our port will become a major transshipment and logistics port within the OCS, creating new business opportunities to the port to expand revenue, to expand employment. When you look at our cruise facility, by the end of this year, when we finish the land-based facilities on Newgate Street, between us and global ports, that is the government and global ports, we would have spent 100 million US dollars to develop our cruise port. Today, we have cruise facilities that can accommodate the largest ships in the world. Prior to that, we did not have those facilities. Our cargo port can accommodate the largest cargo ships in the world. And also in English Harbor, we now have a super dock that can accommodate the largest mega yachts in the world. You see where we're going? So when we say next level, it's not rhetoric. It is a new frontier of development. This is where we are taking this country. And I ask the people of Antigua and Barbuda, which administration, which party, which team can you trust with your future? Which team can take this country to the next level of development, of progress, of prosperity? I put it to you that the only team that is equipped with the skills, with experience, to take this country to the next level is the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. Let's hear it again for Labour Man. Now, my dear comrades, I also have to tell you too that even in terms of ICTs and broadband services, so far APO has invested $50 million to bring fiber to all the communities in this country. And they're investing another $50 million to bring their own on the sea cable so they can reduce the price of broadband services and to provide you at faster speeds. Already, APUR PCS has the best internet service on the island because of the investments my administration has made. 
$100 million. So let me tell you now, they can't test us. We're not here to fool anybody. We can stand up in any forum and speak about our successes, how we had to advance this country and the next level of development. And as we build out the ICT infrastructure to include fast speed, fast speed um, internet services, you know what we're doing here? We are creating a new digitalization sector that will provide new jobs, better jobs, especially for our young people. And we're also training our young people at Five Islands. So for example, at Five Islands, we have created a new campus. It is called the campus, or let's say the faculty of computing, science, and artificial intelligence. So when we finish training these young Antiguans and Barbudans, they can become entrepreneurs. They can provide ICT-based services to companies outside of Antigua and Barbuda. What we're doing, we're expanding the job market. So you don't have to depend exclusively on the domestic market to provide your services and, of course, to earn a premium pay. And the other issue I want to speak about, and I'll wrap up in a while. I know you're getting tired. You want me to go on? Is the issue of housing. My dear comrades, there is a housing revolution taking place in this country. And my administration continues to subsidize home in this country. And I want to say to you, we have given Comrade Tintin James an undertaking that we will conduct or construct for that matter a housing project right here at Mack Pond. Because you know what? We want to make sure that the gains that we have achieved over the years, that those gains are spread right throughout the country. No community will be left behind. And whenever you buy one of our homes from National Housing or Chapel, you're literally getting at least $100,000 in value in your pockets. And you know how we did that? Because we recognized when we came in in June of 2014 that there was an extreme skewness in the distribution of wealth. And my administration took a decision that we had to redistribute wealth to the working class people in this country. So we're redistributing wealth by subsidizing your homes, your cars, and even your businesses. So when you buy your capital equipment, we write off the taxes. So we work, man. It's about empowering ordinary people. And you know what? The Labour Party has never been an elitist institution. And it never will be. You see people like Harold Lovell et al. in the UPP? They tell themselves that they are cut above the rest. They have this false notion of superiority. But guess what? You have a prime minister now that ordinary like you. You never love to tell you a me like a thinking dirty Gaston Brown from Point. So me can't cut no style for y'all. And everything that I have achieved, I want you to achieve. I have got a university degree. You must get a university degree. I have a car. You must have a car. I have a home. You must have a home. You think I want to be driving around in an SUV and see our people and donkeys are walking? What I have, you must have. You would recall that in 2014, before we came to office, we said we're going to build 500 homes in 500 days for the ordinary people of this country. We didn't achieve it within the timeline, but we have built more than 1,000 homes. And I want to assure the people of Antigua and Barbuda that we will scale up our housing project so you will get far more homes built out on an annual basis than we would have done in the past. Our objective, ultimately is to deliver seven to 10,000 homes to the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Because you know what? You must have good quality, climate resilient homes. Why should I live in Hodges Bay? Well, then again, I told you all I own a home. Begging lodging in a nice home. But at the same time, you must live in an old dilapidated property. Not under my tenure. And I want to say to those of you especially in the suburban areas or for that matter in the urban communities around the central business district 
where you have these dilapidated properties. We will have an urban renewal program that will rebuild those homes. I personally want to see this country rid of all those dilapidated wooden properties and to provide you with sustainable homes. And you know what we have done? So far, we built a concrete plant. We just completed the construction of a block plant. We're not stopping there now. We have 40% shares in a company by the name of Blue Ocean. And they will commence the mining of sand shortly. So we should be able to get the sand practically for free. And it means therefore that all we have to do is get the labor and the cement. And you get your climate resilient concrete homes. Well obviously we have to put steel in there too. I want you to understand my dear people what is at stake here. And you now have a choice of voting for retrogression by going back to Harold Lovell and the UPP. And I want to warn you all, let us not forget what Harold Lovell has done to the people of this country. Let us not forget the thousands of people who lost their work. And you know he said to you all, oh sorry, there was a global crisis. We have had to contend with COVID. That is the worst crisis that the country, that the globe, this country and the world has seen in over 100 years. You ever hear me coming to you to complain about any um, COVID? I said to you that we are resilient people, we are creative people, and we will get the job done. And even during this very difficult period, we found $15 million to recapitalize Social Security to make sure that the pensioners get their money on time. And guess what? Most public servants so far have gotten their back pay. Even though revenues are down. That is the resilience. That is the competence of this administration. And I want to ask the people of Antigua and Barbuda. Are you going to risk giving this country to the likes of Harry Lovell, of Serpent, of Sean Bird, who never worked away in your life, otherwise they're knocking around a radio station? How can you risk that? And it's not because I want to get personal. But if you bring people that don't have the skills to run the country, I have to point out that to you. <coughs> On the other hand, with the Labour Party, you have a team of competent people. You have experience. You have youth. There is no better team to run this country. You know, one person said to me recently, they said, look, it will be a travesty for the people of Antigua and Barbuda to vote out the Labour Party. And that person said to me that he doesn't even think the Labour Party should have to campaign based on the work that we've done to date. But you know what? We are not taking anything for granted. And I have to tell you now, based on my upbringing as a poor child in this country, I had to fight for everything that I achieved. I'm not looking for an easy pass. So I'm not coming to tell you that we have performed and therefore you should vote for us without telling you what we have for you in the future. And already we have indicated to you where we're going with this country, where we're taking this country to the next level of development and progress. And that is why I ask each Antiguan and Barbudan, each elector to carefully consider the choice and to make the right choice by returning the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party to power. And the final point I want to make tonight is that I'm of the view that Comrade Tintin James is most deserving of the support of the people of All Saints East and St. Luke. And I encourage you to give him your full support. He lost by 10 votes. And I have to tell you, they said that um, Pringle outspent him in the last elections and got certain support. Well, I want to tell you all, that can't happen in 23. And I know some of you, you had certain expectations of him. And he may be disappointed. I want to tell you all, Tintin heart is with you. His heart is in the right place. Give him a chance. Give him a chance to deliver for you. And I have no doubt that the Labour Party will win the next general elections. But we want to make sure that Comrade Tintin James is part of our team. And I want to signal to all of you 
that Comrade Tintin James has my full support as the leader of this great institution. So again, I appeal to you to support Comrade Tintin James and the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party. Thank you very much. Love you all. Good night. Have a good evening. Oh, the meeting continues. The meeting continues. We've got two speakers to come. We've got the Honorable E.P. Chad Green and the man I call the finisher, Comrade Malwin Joseph. But we're going to bring Tintin back on to wrap up because Tintin have a few projects he's dying to tell you about. So, Mr. Music Man, give me the music to bring Tintin back up again. Let's give the Prime Minister a round of applause. Thank him so much for coming through tonight. In the meantime, come, come to, come to Tintin. The music man having some issues there. Thank you once again, Comrade Winston Williams. And I just want to say that all the good things I heard the Prime Minister speaking about a while ago, we're mirroring every single project, every single initiative that the government has taken here in all sense East and St. Luke. We have our own educational development program where we have assisted a number of young people in the, cons in the constituency to take up studies at the University of the West Indies Five Islands Campus, the Antigua and Barbuda Institute of Information and Technology, Abbott, and also Abyss, the Antigua and Barbuda Institute of Continued Education. We have also assisted with students going overseas for the tertiary educational development. So we continue, and we will continue to work with the young people of the constituency to make sure that they benefit from the good work that the Antigua and Barbuda Labour Party government has been doing. The Prime Minister touched briefly on sports, and my acumen in sports and sports development. I just want to tell you that maybe about two to three months ago, what you see to the west of you in terms of the lighting system here at the Mark 1 playing field was not there at all. Sometime in August, September, it was dark as midnight, and I made a call to Comrade Lennox Weston and said, Comrade, we have a tournament coming up here in September. We're bringing up a visiting team from Nevis, and we want the Mark 1 playing field lit. And in short order, he gave the instructions, and we had the playing field lit. And right now, we can play matches here right down until midnight going into the morning. And so I want to commend the Minister of Public Works and also the APUA and Juan Basso Peters, the engineer, who basically transformed Macpon from being a dark corner into a very lively community so we can play football, we can play cricket, we can play any sport on the playing field until when we are ready to stop. And we're going to do the same here for the Mark Pond Sports Complex because we're not going to just stop. We're going to make sure that we enclose a section here of the sports complex to make sure that we can have indoor games, whether it be basketball, netball, volleyball, even boxing, because we must take the Mark Pond playing field and the Mark Pond Sports Complex to the next level. That is what we're all about here in our sense, East and St. Luke. And I can go on and on and on. The Prime Minister spoke about education and early childhood development. Well, we have a plan here for All Saints and Mark Pond itself. We are going to build an early childhood development center right here at Mark Pond because we believe that we have the lands around the playing field, we have the space, so we're going to make sure that those youngsters between zero and five receive the benefit of early childhood education. And you, single parents, who need to send your child to a center, facility, to make sure that they develop early, you will have that facility at your disposal to make sure that you can bring your children to that facility when it's developed within the next two years, being your representative, and you'll have that facility at your beck and call. We're not going to stop there. We're looking at the whole question of maybe putting in another education facility further to the eastern side of Mark Pond, between Berks and between Spring, as you may know it. 
because it's important that we continue to relieve the JT Ambrose School of overcrowding. Right now, I believe that the racial per student, per teacher at the JT Ambrose School can come down a bit more and we need to, another facility that can deal with primary educational development in All Saints, East and Central, in particularly the village of All Saints. You heard the Prime Minister speak to the fact that there's a housing revolution in Antigua and Barbuda. And we too are going to make sure that we have a housing development project here in Macpon, in Barks, in Osborne as well. Because we're not going to let what is happening on the eastern side of the community to continue unabated. What we're saying is that we're not going to remove anyone from the lands that they occupy now, but we're going to give them title to the land. We're going to survey the lands, and we're going to give them title. So if they want to go to the bank to get a mortgage to build a decent home, they can do so. And already we have started. You know that there's a particular family that lives on the eastern side of Osborne, between Burks and Osborne. The Dean family, I can call the name. And they had been without electricity and water for a number of years. They said one representative in 2014 made sure that she end the electricity supply right at a particular home and not extend it further. And cabinet has passed a decision before we took the break or before cabinet took the break for Christmas, cabinet took a decision that the Dean family will receive the benefit of those lands at $3 per square foot. Let's say for the Antigua and Babylon party, man. And we're going to put in the infrastructure development there. We're going to put in the electricity, we're going to put in the water, and we're going to make sure that they have telephone services. And we'll do that through the length and breadth of All Saints and other communities that make up All Saints, East and St. Luke, so they can benefit from what this government is all about. Moving to the next level, comrades and friends. I can go on and on and on. We're going to take the young people off the block. We're going to develop a manufacturing plant in the constituency. We're going to make sure that those young people who are on the block, that we can provide meaningful and gainful employment for them so they can earn a living, so they can improve their lives and their livelihood. So we've already discussed with an investor from the Dominican Republic that we're going to bring a metal manufacturing plant here in Antigua that will not only service Antigua and Barbuda, not only the OECS, but the international community as well. So you young people who are good with your hands and you want to learn a, a skill, a trade, look forward to the next level of development in terms of metal manufacturing plant right here in the constituency of All Saints East and St. Luke. And as I said, there's so many plans that we can talk about. But my time is spent and we have two other speakers to come. So let me make way for the next two speakers and let me say to you that we didn't win in 2014. The margin was 160 odd votes. We didn't win in 2018. The margin was 10. So what does that tell you, ladies and gentlemen? This constituency is trending towards the Antigua and Barbuda Party. We're trending to victory. And I want you to join with me. Support me. Vote for me on January 18 to make sure all Saints East and St. Luke's become part of the Antigua and Barbuda Party government. That you'll have a sitting representative in the parliament of Antigua and Barbuda. That will look after your future and make sure that your children's future is safely secured on the labor. Good night. Thank you very much. Love you. Enough respect. See you soon. Thank you, Colin. Spirit the line. Yeah. Are you ready? January the 18th. That is the date you have to keep in mind. They say we're dead already, but never count us out. We will come back strong and ready because we are ready. We've got two powerhouse speakers and I'm going to introduce the first one to you. You hear so much about the international community. You hear so much about the importance of our economy. But none of that is possible unless you have a man a woman who can go to those countries and sit with them face to face and negotiate on behalf of you, the people of Antigua and Barbuda. In the middle of COVID, when everybody else was afraid, Gaston Brown turned to my next speaker 
and said, you have to get on a plane and you have to go to America. You have to go to the European Union countries and you have to tell them that Antigua and Barbuda will be opened again for business. And he didn't back up. He didn't run away. Instead, he stuck to his guns. Today, planes are flying into this country hour after hour after hour after hour. Today, our hotels are packed to capacity simply because he and the list of our ambassadors have been working over time to get uh, uh, visitors to this country. I said to you tonight, this man have delivered on behalf of the Antigua and Barbudan people. As we get ready, Mr. Music Man, please join with me and welcome the man from St. Paul's, the Foreign Affairs Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, none other than Paul, Paul, Paul Chet Green. Thank you, Comrade Chairman, Comrade Political Leader, Comrade Samantha Marshall, Malvin Joseph, and Colin James, Comrades of Zone 3. It was a great day. Let me first thank all the comrades who joined us this evening from Wenner Road right through to where we are now in Mokpon. But what started as a small little whistle stop, at least that was our plan, it turned out into a major, major motorcade. And guess what? Already people are trembling in their boots, they're quaking their boots. And this is just four of our branches, our constituencies coming together. Imagine what will happen on the 15th. On the 15th of January, Incidentally, my birthday and Melford Nicholas's birthday, we'll be having the mother of all motorcades in this country. And that motorcade is intended to show solidarity, to show respect, to show appreciation, and to show that there's a continued bonding between the Antigua and Barbuda party and the people of this country. Come rest and I want to do two things. I want to first endorse the candidacy of Comrade Colin James. I don't think it is anything but fair and truthful at the same time to say that there is nobody in this country in sports development who has made a greater impact on cultivating and developing youngsters in sports than Colin Tintin James. The person who comes closest to him is a friend of mine named Luther Lee. But I give Colin the edge because Colin continues him today while Luther's retired. Yes. When I look here in All Saints and the lights of the Macpon field, that in itself is enough for Colin James to be elected to the House of Representatives. Because All Saints is one of the largest sporting communities in this country. Be it cricket, football, Basketball, netball, you name it. All Saints is a powerhouse in sports in Antigua and Barbuda. And when I look across tonight, we came into the area and saw youngsters, scores of youngsters, playing football on the lights. I could not help but think of the work of Colin James and how deserving he is to be given your support on election day to continue to build out a stronger yet post sports infrastructure here in All Saints. I endorse Colin James also because of the plans he has for the future of his community. The Prime Minister alluded to it. Colin himself spoke to it. And so mine is a matter of echoing it that a housing project has been identified for this community right in the Berks area. It didn't happen by osmosis. It happened because Colin James came and met with the cabinet 
and made representation on behalf of this community and its residents. He mentioned to you tonight the price of the land, three dollars a square foot, and that's again in keeping with the Prime Minister's utterances tonight. That we don't want to be the only people to own homes in Antigua. We want every single one of you to be a home homeowner, a proud homeowner. And the government of Gaston Brown, the Labour Party administration, will be a facilitator in you becoming a homeowner. In all sense, the land exists. In all sense, the plan exists. And you have a caring government. And in Colin James, an able representative fighting on your behalf and in your interest. I want to speak about Colin because I've sat in the parliament for the last five years looking across the aisle of a fellow named Jamal Pringle. And I'm not one to be read people, at least not easily. But I'm satisfied that Pringle has some kind of learning disability. Not even things written for him, he can read properly. Some say it might be dyslexia. I don't know. But I want to say to the people of All Saints, East and St. Luke, that are a proud product of the education system in this community. And when I hear Pringle get up to speak in Parliament, I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed because, like me, he went to All Saints School. Like most of you hear my voice tonight, we all went to All Saints School. And we know that school has much better than what has been offered to the Parliament from this community. I want to say to the people of All Saints, East and Luke, especially the people of All Saints, which brings me to my next point, my final point. I'm going to be brief because we've had previous speakers. We have one more speaker, and we have tomorrow night a very important engagement down in Rural West. And so all of you here tonight, I expect to see you in your numbers at Rural West as we endorse the candidacy of Comrade Gail Christian and prepare like we prepare Colin James tonight for election to the law house. But the other point I want to make tonight is that of walking you through the pathway to victory for all saints East and St. Luke. I can do it with utmost ease because I had a similar problem that Colin had in 2009 when I ran first. When I ran first, I won six out of seven boxes in Liberta. And you remember they say over the hill? I lost the whole election over the hill. And I resolved then that it would not happen again. And so I made sure by 2014, when we leave Liberta, the election is behind of us. And so the Comrade James and his team, I'm saying to you, that the pathway to winning this seat come uh, January 18, 2023, is to milk every single possible vote out of All Saints, your community of birth. When you leave All Saints, it must be on anybody winning the seat. And so in Burks, in Magpon, in all of this area of All Saints, why the All Saints that make up the constituency of All Saints, Luke and St. Luke, I'm saying to you, you see the work of labor. You have benefited from the work of labor. You tell me every day we speak how much you appreciate the Prime Minister, his advocacy and his leadership. In other words, how much you appreciate the work of labor. You tell me that you believe the Labour Party will win the election and so you don't have to vote because the Labour Party doesn't win. We are saying to you, having fought the fight on your behalf, having kept jobs or lives and livelihoods saved during COVID, the one thing we ask of you, election day, January 18th, is to go to the polls and vote for Comrade Colin Tintin James. Don't simply say the Labour Party don't win. Because what the Prime Minister said to you is what I said to you. We want Colin James in the Law House of Parliament representing all Saints East and St. Luke. Since Comrade used to Cochrane, we have not won that seat. But we believe that having done the work and the admiration you show for the work we've done, that Comrade James deserves an opportunity to represent you in the House of Parliament. Comrade James is a hard worker, a fearless person. And I believe, and you know, 
Because he's born right here with you. Grew up right here with you. Continue to provide services to you right in this community. That once you go out there on election day and put your vote right next to the, the flame, the heart, Labour Party, Colin Tinton James, that Colin will win the seat. He lost the seat last time by 10 votes. 10 votes. This time, he will come home. Because a trend has been developed over the last two elections. He lost by 107 votes in 2009. Um, or 14, sorry. By 18, he lost by 10. In 23, with your support. With your respect. With your love. With your admiration. And your gratitude for the work done by this party. Colin James will come home. I'm saying to you, as a next door neighbor constituency St. Paul, I will not go to Parliament without Colin James in 2023. So I'm asking the people of all says, Jesus and Luke to go out there to the polls on January 18th and elect Colin James. So at St. Paul, we'll be joined by all says, East and St. Luke, that you will for the first time in a long time have proper and effective representation. Like me, I'm sure that you shudder. You tremble. You are ashamed when you hear your MP in Parliament. And let's face it. Every one of us want to know when our MP is standing in Parliament or any, any platform for that matter. That they represent. And if I know the people of all saints as well as I do, having gone to school with many of you, it is the same feeling you have about your community. You want to see and know that the person who represents you does so with that level of competence, a level of excellence. And you can only find that excellence on this state led by Gaston Brown. You have heard him for yourself for the last five years. Even trying to read is a problem for the young man. So comrades, like I said, I want to do two things. One is to endorse Comrade Colin James. And I gave you reasons. This lighting project. Every young person, all saints, benefited from the lighting, the, the, the lighting of um, Mokpan. Would realize that this is a development long waited for. And that Colin James, even before he becomes a minister of government, even before he becomes elected to the law house, has delivered on a project. A dream of this community. And the second thing I've done, comrades, is to show you the pathway to Colin's victory. Let us leave All Saints with all of the votes possible because we have never lost the All Saints boxes. A fellow named Chester Hughes told me last week that they're trembling because Pringle is not doing as well as they thought he would be doing. And so he realized that Colin James is making inroads that the trend we saw develop over the last two elections, is continuing to develop in the favor of the Labour Party. I want to also tell you that recent polls show that the Labour Party is not only going to win the government, but the Labour Party is going to successfully dominate the parliament of Antigua and Barbuda. I don't want all says, ease and say, do we left out. I'm sure you're, you're tired of being in the losing column. Let's bring home all says, ease and look. Let's bring Colin James to the parliament to represent the people of this great community. Yes. I have a great affinity to this community. Like I said, I went to school here. I played sport in Mark Pond, cricket, football, both at the school level and community level. And so I know tonight that Roxy Joseph, Anthony Merrick, and all the youngsters in this community who are Colin's peers and his equals are ready for the change. Ready to put Colin James in parliament to represent you. January 18th is 14 days away. The countdown is well and truly on. To the people of All Saints East and St. Luke, I say to you, make the right choice. Vote for effective leadership. Vote for good representation. Vote for the real man. No single Pringle can work. Single Pringle is a failure. Time for Colin James. And Colin's demonstrated to you that even without ministerial responsibility or duties, 
he has delivered to the people of this community. God bless you all, Lord says yes and Luke. God bless this community. Long live the Antigua Babylon Party. And let us keep our voting IDs safe and close to us. Because on election day, it will labor, 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 labor 17 times. Giving Prime Minister Gaston Brown that level of representation the country um, desires. Let me, before I leave, thank again, once again, all the people from St. Paul's, St. Mary's, North and South, and all St. Luke. The bus driver, St. Paul's, Pepe and Kenny, boy, you got a wonderful job. I look forward to having you continue to work on the 15th, transporting my people up and down this country. God bless. Thank you, comrade. Thank you, comrade. Our meeting continues with our final speaker. And you know... Every Prime Minister, every Prime Minister has to have a negotiator on the team. Every Prime Minister has to have a man that when the discussions become difficult, that he can call on that individual and he says, go into that meeting and wrap this up. I call him the finisher. You know him as the Minister of Health. Because when it was necessary during COVID, many people didn't want the job that he have. But when the Prime Minister asked who will go, it was Mulwin Joseph who guided us through the worst pandemic ever to hit this world. I said to you, I present to you the man, the next parliamentary representative of St. Mary's North. The Honorable, the Honorable, Malwin Montgomery Joseph. Good night. Okay, okay. Uh, it's a long night. I'm going to be very short. But I want to do something tonight, in addition to endorsing Tintin, our comrade who will occupy Parliament after the next election. One of the things that is happening in the strategy of the UPP is lies and deception. In 2004, the UPP was able to get a significant number of CARICOM voters because they offer them millennium citizenship. Many of them tried to resist it, but many fell victim of that deception. The Jamaicans, the Guyanese, the Dominicans, all believe our level. I want to play something tonight. And this will make Tintin win this election. I want a Jamaican person who is here from Jamaica. Take this over to the, the man with the music and tell him to play it. There is nothing worse in an election than politicians coming before you and tell bareface lies. How a level has said to you, Jamaicans, Dominicans, Guyanese, that if you vote for them, that they will set up a special committee in the government where you make the decision as to who becomes citizens in this country. That is how a level. He said they'll process it. Pardon me? Just play the flash drive and I will tell you which one of them that I want you to play. I want to hear. Just play the thing. Tell them to go to the other one.
The next one. Come on, man. You don't know the technology. Let us expose the UPP tonight. Oh, come on. Go back to the beginning and let the people hear. They must hear it. All right, go ahead. Just play. A place, you all listen carefully. You want to give them a salary. You want to make them a minister. They, the people rejected them in their constituency. You still want to reward them. Also, persons who had um, maybe had one term in the law house, they had laws. You want to put them in the Senate so they will be a member of parliament for a second term to qualify to get a pension. Election and cause us to keep out the ALP, you know. You see, I just came here from the airport, Serpent, because I went to see the students board that plane to go back to, to Cuba. You cannot imagine the challenges I had to put this charter together, okay? Right, it was only it two days before they arrived here that everything was finalized. I say to you now that if we, if we were not successful in organizing that charter, Trevor Walker would not have won in Barbuda, okay? Several Barbudan students came on that charter to vote for Trevor Walker. So if just by chance it was so difficult, I could have backed off. I could have backed off and said, oh, this is causing too much trouble and so forth. At one point, I had to get the prime minister to call the foreign minister of Cuba to intervene with certain bureaucratic uh, bottlenecks and, and hiccups we were having down there towards getting this charter implemented. If I were a, a, a more softy, softy kind of person, uh, not willing to really push against the wall, the charter would not have come out. And Trevor Walker would have lost. Now uh, he's missing the point. He's missing the point considerably. And I I'll address his concerns in a while when I get the opportunity to. But he's totally missing the point. Well, We're not preaching no anti foreign okay, sentiment and so here. That that is not what it's all about, right? We, we have a very yeah, profound analysis of a particular yeah, yeah. situation here that we're dealing with, but we are not here stirring up anti foreigner sentiment as such, okay? We have a nation to protect. Well, that is true. Okay? Uh -huh. From manipulation of vulnerable people who come here it's and it's allow it's themselves to be manipulated, and this is the essential aspect of what we're analyzing here. Okay. We are not talking about going against point. foreigners for the sake of going against foreigners. So you are missing the point. That's correct. That is the analysis we push in today. What can we do next? Of course, the government will have to make a decision as what to do next. I have some suggestions which I could give to the government on this. And my first suggestion would be we search the communities and all those non-nationals, and we can get to them through the immigration system, all those non-nationals who are not working, who are not gainfully contributing to our economic system and our social system, they should be repatriated. They should be sent home yeah. now yeah. without any further yeah. As I say, we have been very welcoming. They have come here. They could never have achieved in Guyana and Jamaica what they achieve here in Antigua. Yeah. I know Jamaica very well. I live there. I know Guyana very well. I've traveled there on many occasions. If you know the amount of corpus in Jamaica and in Guyana, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. you know that we have this uh, element that of is the UPP. Poor, uh, immigrants in our country whose only motivation for being here is money. That to is money the UPP. And as much money and by whatever means possible. They see so those of you as a time to cash time. in on the fact that they have a vote to offer. So let me sell my vote. All right. All right. BJ, BJ, that's the part I wanted to hear. Now, the UPP. As we refer to our national, national as, as purpose. You come, you come here. here. Now what, now he, what said, he said, it happened, it happened after, after 2004. 2004. I, remember I remember in Cashew Hill, Hill, the number, the number of, Jamaicans of Jamaicans and Guyanese, and Guyanese who, were who were visited in midnight, in midnight taken out of their beds and arrested for them to go home. Well, I'm not going to be long, because this has been a long night. But I want to tell you how you deal with UPP politicians. When you see them, when you see them having heard this tonight, turn your back. 
When you see them, turn your back. And if you can't turn your back, walk fast. Walk fast. And when the most important thing on election day, you're going to see the UPP name on that ballot. All you do when you see the name, say troops, and put the X against the Antiguan Barbie of the Labour Party. Because the history of embracing CARICOM citizens in this country did not come by accident. B.C. Bird opened up the opportunity because he recognized we all came across the Atlantic as slaves. Some of them drop off in Barbados, Jamaica, and some of them come here in Antigua. So there are people in Jamaica who are my family. There are people in Barbados who are my family. And I'm saying it is wicked for Harry Lovell and the UPP to come now and say to the non-nationals, we love you. We are going to create all kinds of... Good night. Test, test. Test, 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 test. Cabrera's want to thank you for coming out tonight. we we'll see you at Rural West tomorrow night. Rural West, we're heading down. West supporting Comrade Gail Christian. Thank you for traveling with us. Thank you for loading up your cars. See you again tomorrow night. The fight continues all the way to January 18th. Good night. Get home safely.